After building a reputation as a ruthless competitor among the late model ranks throughout the 1970s, Tommy Ellis would earn the nickname Terrible Tommy across racing circles. Eventually winning the NASCAR Late Model Sportsman Championship in 1981, in which would be the final year prior to the consolidation and realignment of the series. His six victories would be the most for a driver in the series that year and cement his title hopes over Brad Teague and Jeff Bodine. Ellis would compete full-time in the new Budweiser Late Model Sportsman Series for 1982, primarily in the Ellis Racing No. 12 and occasionally in the No. 36. After suffering early DNFs at Daytona and Richmond, he would break through at Bristol coming home third. Beginning at a return trip to Richmond on May 2nd, his only finishes outside of the top 10, the remaining 21 events of the season would be five further DNFs, earning an additional victory at Langley Speedway and finishing second at Asheville, IRP, and three times at Hickory Motor Speedway during this span. He would close out the season third in points behind Jack Ingram and Sam Ard, having compiled 16 top 10s, 13 top 5s, and one win in 29 starts. His success would continue into 1983, coming home seventh at the season opener from Daytona and claiming his first victory of the season in the fourth round at Hickory. He would keep the hammer down throughout the season, winning four out of the five events at South Boston, the June event at Hickory, and the fall race at North Wilkesboro. Tommy Ellis, pole winner, is the weather today going to be a factor? Yeah, you know, Vinny, it's definitely going to be a factor. I I'm worried about it because uh, two things we set up yesterday in, in 70 degree weather and uh, the call the call was was perfect. You know, I had it dialed in. I, I went out and got it in the race set up as well as qualifying. I knew exactly what we had to do. I like to run this race with about 10 or 15 degrees push with the race set up. And, uh, you know, we had that yesterday and we come here this morning and, and we ran again with the with the same thing. and. Uh, I'm a little bit worried now because I feel like the track is going to be tight, maybe too tight, and maybe the push might hurt me. Uh, I feel like right now, with the weather being what it is, maybe a, a neutral setup would work really good for 150 laps, but we've got about 10 degrees of push in it, and I'm going to try to live with it. Back straight away, Ellis in front, hard in second. They look pretty equal down the straightaway, and it's very hard to make uh, a move going into the corner because everybody's trying to get to the inside of the racetrack. Ellison Ard locked up in a good squabble up in front. Ellis not giving any room. He's a tough Virginia driver. The majority of the other events would be feast or famine for the team, suffering 12 DNFs throughout the year. The reliability issues would leave him fourth in points at season's end behind Tommy Houston and once again the duo of Ingram and Ard. It was overall a strong effort, finishing the year with seven victories, 16 top five, and 21 top 10 finishes in 35 starts. His notable speed over the past few seasons would open up further opportunities on the Cup Series side, namely with Morgan McClure Motorsports and later Friedlander Racing in the mid-80s. It lends itself well to aggressive drivers. And the man who has planked himself on the pole is probably one of the most aggressive in the business, Tommy Ellis. Tommy, it looks like you're not going to have to fight too hard to come to the front today. Well, you know, fortunately, uh, Freelander Pontiac qualified on the pole. We ran very good. We owe a lot of that thanks to our engine builders, Horns and Eames out of Richmond. They did a really good job in building us an engine that would that would have enough horsepower to put us on the pole. You know, this is a horsepower racetrack, and, uh, you know, we, we've had what we needed here at Bristol, and we've run good ever since we've been here, and hopefully we can start this race and continue on. He would run a limited schedule on the Bush Grand National side from 1984 through 1987. Remaining competitive when he was in the field, Ellis would win seven times in the 46 starts made during this period, with 1985 being by far the most successful run, winning five out of the 15 events he entered. Our first live telecast for 1985 here in Bristol, and Tommy Ellis has the lead as they come off of turn number four. Oh, well, we started to comment that Ellis, he's a feisty little guy. He's built like oh, a fullback. Uh, remember Don Nottingham, who used to play for the uh, Miami Dolphins? some respects, Ellis is a little bit reminiscent of him, and he really likes this kind of racetrack. It's the kind he can get his teeth into. He'll be tough. But Tommy Ellis, the former national champion, makes a move to the inside. The car just ahead of them, number two, the yellow L.D. Ottinger machine is not on the lead lap. L.D. Ottinger is showing a lap down. The race lead shuffles back and forth there quickly, and Tommy Ellis has the edge now ahead of Dale Earnhardt. You know, Tommy Ellis is 40 years old, and uh, he's 1981 national champion for NASCAR. He took over this ride early in the year, and he has done one whale of a job in this car. The car J&J &J 
Racing out of Savannah, New York, near Syracuse. And uh, Tommy said if they could just get a sponsor, maybe for 88, they could run for the championship. And they just might, and they're very impressive today. After driving for J&J &J Racing in 11 events during the 1987 season, Ellis would sign on to run the full schedule for the team in 1988, marking a full-time return to the series. They have proved to be a formidable threat early on, earning two top five and three top ten finishes in the first six races of the season. As Ellis in the red number 99 and Earnhardt in the silver and black number eight go at it. And right there's another fellow that don't mind mixing it up with them, Tommy Ellis. He's a former national champion of this division, and wherever there's a hole, he don't mind sticking his nose in there either. After claiming the victory in race number seven at Langley on April 30th, it would move him up to second in points. He would remain consistent throughout May and June, picking up five top tens, two top fives, and a win at Louisville. An oil leak suffered the following week at Myrtle Beach would be his final DNF of the season. Following a seventh-place run at Oxford Plains and a runner-up finish at South Boston, he would overtake the points lead from Mike Alexander. Ellis would claim his third victory of the season at Langley on July 30th. <laughs> continue to run in single file formation. Now, what about the points battle? Well, that's relegated all the way back here to row number eight, where I am standing. First, Tommy Ellis. He's led the standings for most of the season, but he has not won since July. Maintaining consistency throughout the remainder of the season, he would only finish outside of the top ten three times the remainder of the year, taking home the Bush Grand National Series Championship by 295 points over Rob Moroso. Of all the stories in bush racing this year, this is the lead story. It's a drama about a 20-plus year veteran who came into the season with a reputation of being aggressive and a no-holds-barred type of racer. But as the possibility of a championship has loomed ever closer this season, he has changed his very life-driving style. Tommy Ellis has become a calculated race driver, a thinking man's race driver. And all those numbers that Bob Jenkins mentioned translate to five positions. That's how many spots that Tommy Ellis must finish ahead of Mike Alexander to write the final chapter in the story and win the championship. And where does Mike Alexander begin this race? All the way in the last row. Remember, though, the number 99 car, and there it is on the left side of your screen. The red 99 is driven by Tommy Ellis, and he is going for the Bush Grand National Championship this afternoon. He is currently in 20th position, but he has told us in conversation prior to the race that he will not be his normal aggressive style and go for the win necessarily. He wants to play it conservatively and win the championship this afternoon. And even though he was had one of the fastest cars in practice here this morning, Bob, he didn't qualify that well. He had an engine problem, Tommy Ellis did, during qualifying, but he said his car was working very well, but he's still running very, very conservative right now. Tommy Ellis, however, has come in for a pit stop. Tommy has uh, come in a couple of times now in just the last few laps as he tries to wrap things up in the Bush Grand National Division here at Rockingham. Now there is Tommy Ellis as he's running right behind Mike Alexander. Remember, he only needs four positions above Mike to clinch the title here this afternoon. As long as Tommy Ellis can stay in that place and see Mike Alexander and know that he's a lap down and Tommy Ellis is in the lead lap, he's got this championship sewn up. He can count the money with if he can stay there for the rest of the race. Tommy Ellis, by the way, has moved up to sixth position. There he is in car number 99, and he battles alongside now Mike Alexander, second in points. And if things continue to go this way, Tommy Ellis has the Bush Grand National title in hand. And the number 99 car of Tommy Ellis makes a quick pit stop and goes back out there. For fuel only, he didn't have enough fuel to make the distance. He was in the lead lap in fifth place, but... I think go a lap down, I think, now. I think he will, but Tommy Ellis is probably going to be a couple of laps down. But his main competitor in the Grand National point standings, Mike Alexander, made a pit stop just a few laps ago while we were away on the, on the uh, break. So he could make that pit stop and still maintain the championship. Looks like that Tommy Ellis is definitely going to win the 1988 Bush Grand National Championship here this afternoon if he continues to stay out there for the next few laps. 
and the 1988 Bush Grand National Champion is Tommy Ellis in car number 99. He wasn't competitive as far as in a battle for the lead all day, but he played it conservatively, and he did what he wanted to do and win the Grand National title. Tommy's the national champion. Here's Larry. Well, Jerry mentioned that Harry Gant used patience to win this race. Here's a man who won the whole season. And, Tommy, I think you really employed patience the last month here, haven't you? Well, I've had to be, and you know, especially today. It's just uh, a lot of times on the restarts, they would jam up three and four deep in lap cars. They were all over the racetrack. And sometimes I'd let as many as seven or eight cars pass me, and I'd work my way back up through them. And it would take my time. I had a car that could run good, and I, I could have run a lot better, but I just had to be too cautious. And... I needed left side tires at the end when I really could run good and felt like it car could go good. My left sides were worried we didn't get them on all day. And I feel like if we could have, we'd have, we'd have really been able to run at top two or three. And, and uh, of course, Harry was strong, and you got to congratulate him. And i got to congratulate, you know, Mike Alexander. He ran me hard and clean all year. I've got to thank my crew chief, my, my crew chief Mike Hillman, and, and especially my co-owners, John Jackson, Bill Papke, and his whole team. It's a great team. We worked hard. I got to thank you, people that stood behind us, Townsend Race Cars, Pro Shocks, Goodyear, Union Oil, especially Buick Motorsports. Finishing the year with 20 top 10s, 12 top 5s, and 3 wins in 30 starts. He would pick up new sponsorship from Goo Goo Clusters and sport a new paint scheme for his title defense in 1989. He would suffer an early exit with a crash on lap 6 of the season opener at Daytona. Fortunately, he would rebound quickly, coming home third at Rockingham. We're watching the battle for second between Tommy Ellis and Dale Earnhardt. This is the battle for second with Harry Gant eliminated from the race because of the black flag. Here they come down off of corner number four. Rob Moroso is going to win the Good Race 200. The battle for second, no, it's won by Dale Earnhardt, I believe. I think it was. <laughs> I think it was by a foot or so. And taking home the checkers in race number three at Martinsville. After finishing second at Hickory the next week in race four, and again at Nazareth in race number seven, Ellis would earn his second victory of the season at South Boston in the series eighth round. Over the 15 races between Lanier on May 13th and Darlington Labor Day weekend, he would earn 10 top tens and five top fives along with his third win of the season at Hickory. Following a second place run at Richmond September 9th, he would overtake the points lead from Tommy Houston. Tommy Ellis is on the pole for the 25th time in his career. Well, that breaks Sam Ard's record. Uh, Sam Ard, one of the greatest that ever lived, was tied with Tommy Ellis, and now the Goo Goo Man has passed him up. Going for his 22nd career win here today. Wins in 84 and 85 on this track. Ellis, he's a tough customer up on the pole. Ellis really pours it on and jumps out in front. Back in front, Moroso, the youngster from New England, ready to challenge Tommy Ellis, 20-year veteran from Virginia. Ken, you know, Moroso's driving very aggressive today. He was beating on Darrell Waltrip, comes right back, beats on Michael, gets by him. Now he's going after Tommy Ellis, but you better tie it on if you're going to beat on that boy because you're allowed to be eating some cement walls. So he better be real careful with Tommy Ellis. He would hold on through the next week at Dover, but would fall back to second in points after suffering an engine failure at Martinsville. Although he would close out the season with back-to-back 10th place runs at Rockingham and Martinsville, he would ultimately come home third in points behind Houston and the season champion Rob Moroso. In the season's 29 events, Ellis would earn three victories, 11 top five, and 18 top 10 finishes. His 1990 effort would once again start with a crash at Daytona, but would quickly settle into consistency, earning three top fives and seven top tens, including a near victory at Myrtle Beach by the time the series pulled into Loudoun, New Hampshire in mid-July. In that event, he would lead 89 laps and route to the 22nd and final victory of his Bush Grand National career. Tommy Ellis, it was one tough automobile race, wasn't it? I tell you, it was one tough race, and this Goo Goo Cluster Buick, it ran like hell all day long. We played catch-up. We had the best call. I think we got up front two or three times. We had a flat tire, lost a lap. The crew did a hell of a job. We beat them out in the pits a couple times. I mean, this is the greatest day of my life, especially with the year we've been having, and you know, I just don't know what to say. I got to thank all my crew. David Ip helped us this week, and he called the best damn race I've ever had anybody call. And oh my gosh, Sammy, Teddy, Alan, Burke, uh, everybody that was here, Ed and all of them. I, I tell you the truth, and my call is John Bill Pepke. You know, I owe it all to them guys because they never got down on me, and we've really been down, believe me.
He would earn five top tens and an additional top five over the season's 13 remaining events, coming home sixth in the final point standings. Overall, earning five top five and 13 top ten finishes to go along with the single victory in 31 races. This would mark Ellis's final full-time season of competition in the series. He would go on to run 35 more races between 1991 and 1995 in a variety of rides, including back with his own team, occasionally running well but enduring a lot of bad luck, notably in his entries with Curtis Key's fledgling effort. Overall, earning two additional top fives and five top tens through those years before making his final series start at Michigan for Bobby Jones. With a reputation that preceded him as one of the fiercest competitors on the circuit, Tommy Ellis earned 22 victories, 70 top five, and 108 top ten finishes in 235 starts. Complemented by his 1988 championship title, Ellis cemented his status as one of the early superstars of the Bush Grand National Series.